how is everybody? I hope you are all doing well. I'm sitting here at my table removing the Trico off of my shoulder pad. One of the things I described it in class, but I didn't actually bring one. I thought I had one and I didn't bring it to show you. So I'm going to talk to you today about our jacket. The jacket is getting, mine is getting pretty well completed and some of you sent me, um, I know Tasha sent her jacket a photo and it, it had its collar and lapels and everything and I know that some of the rest of you are working really hard on yours and just keep trying. Um, I shared with I think Carla saying that so much of what I've learned in my life about sewing has been trial and error and just seeing what I wanted done and just keeping on going. Um, you know, one of the things that I never did bring to class to show you were the really awful things that I made. <laughs> Many of those went to Goodwill or other donations, maybe trash even, but you are doing your best and I think, in fact, if I had even tried as hard as you, maybe I wouldn't have made all of those mistakes, but we just keep going, all right? And the mistakes get corrected, all right? That's the thing that we are not gonna overlook is how to pick it out, how to remove the threads, where it is we need to make the change, and how to have it be successful. You know, now, for most of the time, I don't make mistakes as much, but I know how to correct them. I think that, in fact, if that's probably one of the most valuable sewing skills there is, is how to correct the mistake that you make and how to avoid making it in the first place if you can, which often you can. So um, today I'm going to show you several things. We're going to show you the inside of the jacket, inside of my jacket, and hopefully uh, my granddaughter Abby, who's helping me video all of this, is going to show some close-ups and just have you, you know, take a look inside the jacket. And then, um, uh, see where it's completed and how it's completed and hopefully help you see how you want to do yours. A couple of questions that you emailed me about though, um, uh, one of you, I can't remember now who asked when the final or when the jacket is due. And I know that the school is trying to extend the semester two weeks and so I want it a week before the end but I will make sure to tell you when that is. Let's just say this, try really hard to finish it during the month of April. You will have four weeks in April. I will have my videos ready for you feeding little bit by little bit. The other thing that I'm looking at, and I just haven't had time to think it too deeply into it, is how to communicate with you uh, some of the problems that you're having. So keep emailing me when you have a question, and maybe after we're done with these videos, because um, we're working pretty much most of each day with me getting my work done so that we can go in and film, um, maybe I can start uh, having a phone conference with you here and there, um, and I'll let you know when that's possible. The thing that you're finding is how to proceed on your own. And I 
have never felt particularly great about students having to find answers on their own because I've always wanted to be the one to give the answers and give the direction, but not too much. I'm not one of those teachers that thinks that I should just hold your hand through everything because I want you to learn how to think, how to solve the problem with the skills that you have. You've developed a lot of skills and at this point, when you see a problem, let's just for a hypothetical, if you would see that your collar that we just worked on a couple of days ago, that, that one side's a little longer than the other, okay? Like one's a little bit, one piece of it is a little bit shorter, but those two pieces need to connect. You know what that's telling you? You gotta put some ease in the longer portion, okay? So shrink it up a little bit. And you can always take it if your fabric is easily shrunken to the ham and use a press cloth and some steam and shrink it smaller. And what it does is cause a nice curve. That's what we do in the sleeve head a little bit is we're shrinking out fullness and we're shrinking out um, the extra uh, fabric, pulling the fibers of the fabric closer together and shrinking out their fullness. That's what uh, steaming does it brings those fibers more into control and, and places them closer together but still causing that nice roundness or fullness that's what ease will do all right we're gonna get busy we are ready for our shoulder pad and I showed you how are the shoulder pads that I bought that are in my jacket and I bought them at SAS and I went in and just had fun removing the trico. This is the trico and this is it removed. <laughs> this is it clipped out. All right. And maybe you will like the trico. Um, sometimes people like it uh, where the and the trico is not going to cause a problem. It's just, it's not going to cause a problem. And I'll tell you, sometimes when I am doing this, I get to a point where I, and, and I've laughed before about this, this part that surged, this is a good way to remove it. Get your scissors in there and cut it off. Okay? Sometimes we get to a point where picking things out is just wasting our time and we're not gonna miss that quarter of an inch of our shoulder pad and we just want it off of there. So cut it and get it off and then you can kind of pull the rest of it like this, okay? Yep, we gotta make our clothing and the parts we put into it work for us. And sometimes working for us means not taking ridiculous amounts of time. Cuz you probably agree with me, the jacket already has taken a ridiculous amount of time, right? So, and that little part right there that I just frayed, that causes it to stop fraying right there. <laughs> okay, so here's our our little shoulder pad. And the thing that I liked about these, and I know some of you told me that you couldn't find any at SAS because I had taken them all. And my suspicion is that SAS is closed right now. So do the best you can to prepare a shoulder pad. They used the, a form, I'm sure, in a factory to form this shoulder pad and then they covered it with the trico and these go in the shoulders of dresses and other garments when they're covered like this but sometimes they will even place them into the jacket or someplace that will have a, a lining over the top of it so that they won't ever even be seen and I like them in this form better but they're fine in this form 
And if you cannot find one, you can't find a shoulder pad and, and the stores are closed, you can make one. And I have had um, these patterns for quite a while. What is really interesting here, I know long ago I um, bought this pattern and I have kept it for a long time. As you know, I've always loved shoulder pads and I never really let them die out in my clothes. I've always found a place for shoulder pads. So if you read on here, um, and you can find shoulder pad patterns here and there, they're probably even on the internet, but you see how this says the under section and it gives the grain line marking for it. And honestly, if you used this kind of type of batting, you might not even need a grain line for the actual shoulder pad, but you might for the trico. Because you see here, this is done on a bias. It's cut on a bias, and so it, it conforms to what that is showing. And you see how this also has an under seam right here. With this saying it's the under part, this would be, um, you see how that grain line goes in alignment with that. And then this says that it is the upper section and it would conform. I think this is, this is basically how it goes. All right. So you can find a shoulder pad pattern if you need to. I know that they're sold in the stores. Um, this is a stretch and sew shoulder pad. And once I don't know when I purchased this, but once I found it, I just thought those things are, you know, those are big enough for a football player to wear for protection on the field. Um, so what we could do with this is modify it. We could take portions of it out, like you can peel back layers of it. If you have a shoulder pad like this that that is just kind of too thick, peel portions of it back and it even has a marking for where it goes. This is where you would place it on the shoulder seam. All right, does that kind of give you an idea? You would cut, it says cut four of these and cut four of these and then you'd stitch together the pieces. So it would be, you know, twice this size. And then put the two upper and under together, stitching the sides. And it, it's possible to make your own. So hopefully that helps. All right, so once we get our shoulder pad put together and you see how I have this looking upside down it's sitting up here upside down and it's partly that way it definitely is that way actually because this is the inside of the jacket and when a, a body is in it it will be fitting over the top of a shoulder so just trust me this is the right way to pin it in and let's find, if you want to see here, mine was pre-clipped. So I know this right here is the center of it. So I want that center portion to be right on the shoulder seam. And I want this rounded portion to be right at the head of my sleeve. And I've already checked by pinning them into place on the public side to see that that this this looks to be along with our sleeve head it looks to be about in the right spot all right you want it to extend a little ways into the sleeve head so this is the way i do it and i know that it works um, 
I haven't really researched how other people do it because it's not that hard to do. I've done it a million times. So I'm going to make sure that I get my pin so that I can lift up this seam right here. And I'm just going to do a basting, uh, a type of prick stitch in through the shoulder pad. And it doesn't have to be beautiful. Nobody's going to go check it. Nobody's going to ever see it. So to come through to the shoulder seam and then enter once again upward and try to go straight up through, but you're going to anchor it onto the seam allowance. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side of the seam allowance because you know that my seam allowance is lying open and flat so uh, I'm going to stitch into both sides of it. All right, and when I get closer down here, I'm going to stitch it into the head, uh, just into this seam allowance right here. Just going to stitch through into that, not deeply. You just have to kind of grip just a little bit of it. There have been times when I didn't anchor it quite this well, and it it would um, move around more than I wanted it to. Once you've gotten it in, you kind of don't like the shape or there's a part of it that you want to trim. You can trim these pieces, okay? You can trim your shoulder pad. Look how frayed mine is from dragging it in and out of class so much. But um, you can, this is yours to fix and do and improve. So here it is stitched in with a prick stitch basically which is just come up and go back behind and attach to the uh, seam allowance on both sides and then anchor it just a little bit here on the end and it's ready to go it's it's not going to move and fall out of place so you do that on both sides on both shoulder pads As you can tell, we're getting ready for our lining to end up being sewn in. And let me just do kind of a preview, uh, a preview of, because I talked about doing a stay stitch. So I went ahead and did my stay stitch because I hadn't done it. Make sure you have a stay stitch in. And right in this area, right here over the bus line, you're, need, you're probably going to need, as you can see mine, has a little bit of ease in there because that just often is the way they go in. And you can see how this fits into here and we will end up stitching it in by pinning it against the facing this way and just matching up our notches to where they belong and stitching that in but we're not gonna go there quite yet let me just show though how that will get uh, pinned into place all the way around before we stitch it in by machine now at the bottom down here this hem of the lining I think we're going to do, at least on mine, I'm going to fold it up and hand uh, slip stitch it into place once we have it prepared and ready to go. It'll, it'll slip stitch into place down here. But first of all, we've got to do the hem. So let me get you started on that. This is going to have a catch stitch. All right, so I've started the catch stitch for my hem, and I had um, the pins up high, and I just moved them down as I would come up to them and did the catch stitching so that I have this all ready to go. And the catch stitch, what's good about it for this purpose is it doesn't have any kind of a bulky top to it because it's going to be all covered over. It's just putting an unbound edge up flat and connecting it so that it will be ready to go for the lining 
to fold over the top and tuck up under. And, and I'm gonna slip stitch the lining into place on this one. So let me show you how far I've gone. And it's easier to see the catch stitch on this piece and see me do it because it has the white lightweight interfacing. So here I am. You see how I fold down the part that I'm going to stitch to. And I've still got my pins in place here, but as I come to them, I'm going to place them down at the bottom like I did there. So um, the next thing I do, I see that I've attached here, so I need to slip stitch into this. And notice how the thread stays under my thumb, back away. The thread's not going to be up in here. We control it by keeping it down in there so that it does its job uh, catching properly. All right, so insert, push, and you see my thread is in the wrong spot. So I'm going to just pull it down here and go in up here, pull it through. And my next stitch needs to be, pull it back that way, down into here. And then pull it back. It'll, it'll try to get out of the way, or get, excuse me, into the way that it shouldn't be. All right. And keep pulling it back. And you can get going pretty fast on it if you just get a system going. I let a little knot develop back a minute ago, so here it is trying to, it's still pulling through okay. So just estimate. I can't tell you exactly how far distant to make each stitch on each other, but the further apart they are, the looser your stitching will be. Um, it will pull away from the garment and the closer you have your stitches together the tighter they will be next to the garment so um, this is just a really nice stitch for uh, having kind of a loose um, you know invisible it it should be pretty close to invisible on the public side just have a beautiful invisible spot um, sometimes you will want your stitching to only take uh, up what is the interfacing. Just stick into just the interfacing sometimes. I, I have sometimes hemmed a hem just into the interfacing or the interlining of a garment so that there's, it's completely invisible on the public side. All right, so that's how we're going to prepare that. I know you've seen this before, but I'm going to go backwards on this to show you how we got to this point because I know some of you still would appreciate having how to do each of the steps of the bound buttonhole. And I know I talked about it a lot and showed it a lot, but Abby and I decided if we're going to video, we might as well show it on the video and you can go back and check it. So here I am stitching the back side, the facing of the bound buttonhole. And you can see here how this is the interfacing that is on the back side of the public side, okay? And how we did our little basting stitch, and all of this is in the handout that has the green fabric on it, the handout from the Threads magazine. Stitching all layers together, and remember the little pins that were in the corners so that we clipped the double Y clip and prepared and opened up the back and then tucked Remember how we tuck these pieces in and just keep pulling them into place with your needle, with the point of your needle. So here I am doing my entering 
just into the back seam allowance of the bound buttonhole and coming back up through slip stitching this into place and this is what I did a whole bunch of the last day or so to finish up my bound buttonholes on my jacket and as soon as we get past all of this one of the next things I'm going to show you is the pressing that I did so we each time we're ready to do another stitch we make sure the needle pushes back into place where we're going to stitch and then we go in just into the back of the buttonhole and then slip stitch back up into that fold okay and I have white thread so that we can see it and here we are coming to the corner and remember how I kept showing you push this little V shape back up into its spot they don't know to stay there until you sew them there okay these are little items with no brains and they just want to be sticking out and saying hello you didn't get me nailed down yet see how we got that one pushed into place and just keep pushing it into place as you stitch and sometimes you have to right in here your stitching might be a little more visible um, you just it's hard to get it right out that little folded corner but I always think it's a good idea to err on the side of getting this really stitched in well so if your stitching has to be a little larger uh, so what make it larger and get it get it stitched into place so here we are coming around that corner keeping on pushing into place so that our buttonhole has all of its open space available for a button to go through because most of the time I hope you have done this too you have measured your buttonhole to be the width of your button with like an eighth of an inch larger so now I can go around a second time and really get this now that it's all stitched into place this time I can make my stitches in between the stitches that I already placed in there and it's a lot, kind of a lot more fun to stitch around it the second time because you don't have to keep poking that little piece of fabric back underneath as you see I haven't removed my stitching here my markings for the width of my buttonhole and one of the things that I noticed with a lot of you is that when you stitched your buttonhole into place you went beyond these little markings that's not going to help you this is how long you need to make your buttonhole don't make it longer than that okay here is what we're going to make as a buttonhole okay and remember how I taught you to make this will be your lengthwise portion of the garment and this is going to be the crosswise portion of the garment um, so you have your longer marks stitched in place and then what we will be doing is stitching from where this line is right there okay just make kind of draw a little line down there this is where you start or stop depending on which side you start on and this is where you start or stop right right there okay please don't stitch from pin to pin that's going to make your buttonhole that long all right and if you need it this long from this side to that side which actually is where your button will fit in here you're not going to want it this long so think this through what am I doing here think before you stitch my pin is holding the buttonhole uh, lip portion this one lip and this is the other lip the pins are not my markers the pins are holding it into place okay this is my marker 
and this is my marker. So I'm going to unpin and we're going to go back and review what we do on our garment to make the two parallel lines and they're going to be in, in our garment. They would be in the garment this direction. They're parallel verticals. Think of a field goal poles. There are field goal poles. And here's the crossbar. This guy right here is where our buttonhole piece is going to position. And remember how we folded in one side, determined how wide to make the lip, and then folded it inward, inward, to then pinch and arrange the other side so that it would exactly meet at this point, meet the other side and mark where it was and stitch it exactly the same width as this side. Okay, it has to be exactly the same width and then find that center point by opening it up this way and positioning it underneath our needle and having the same amount of fabric on this side as this side and sewing right down the center. Okay, so I would just have used my sewing machine to just sew right down the center and make sure the same line positioning is on this side of my presser foot as on the other. So right down the center of it and pull all of this out because you don't want to stitch that into place yet. So I kind of pre-stitched it so I knew where to go. All right. So here we are with our center marking. Now remember where that center marking ends up. Right on this little center line, because this is the center of the buttonhole, okay? So that line is matched up to that line, right there, okay? So put our marking pin in. This is not how long we're making the buttonhole, remember. This is just placing our center mark line, and we can check it. We can check its positioning by rolling it back. Okay, rolling it back to see if it's in the right spot. And then pin it into place. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to start right, right here on this little spot right there because that draws me right out into that line. So I'm going to start right there. Put my needle down carefully. Make sure you, this you have to be very correct and technical with. I think, in fact, I'm about one stitch forward. So I'm going to go back one and place my needle in and just hand turn to get it going, okay? And you need to stitch right on that line. I hope I can do it. That's why we put that line in. And then when we get down to this area, we can hand turn so that we end right on the cross line, this little cross line, okay? So check to make sure I didn't get it too awfully perfect. I'm not seeing it well enough, but I needed to be right on that. Let's see if it works. I should go back and do it over. I don't want to bore you. All right, so I'm not going to use the pin line. I'm going to use my little stitched line, and I'm going to pull all of this back and out of the way. Here we are putting our needle down on this spot, and let me make sure. I think I'm like one half a stitch too far back, and I need to move over. So just make sure that you've got marked well enough where you need to put your needle down. It's going backwards. Okay. 
So let's stitch it down here. Sometimes years ago, I used to do um, counting of the stitches. I would start and count how many stitches I did. And boy, I had some pretty perfect buttonholes that way. So now we've got our uh, two lines stitched in and we know that we can, now we can take our pins out and now I'm gonna enter right through all layers. I'm gonna enter right in here through all layers in the center, right on that line. I know that's where I need to enter. And I'm going to cut down that line to this direction into the little point that where I started, where I know that the buttonhole started and a double Y clip. I'm gonna clip into that point or that little corner. I guess it's more a corner. And clip just a little bit down here and then off into that corner and off into that corner so that we can turn it to the public side. All right, so now we're gonna push all of this in through and out and in onto the back side. And you notice I don't have any of my interfacing in here. I skipped that so that you could see this better, but this should all be interfaced in here. So here we have it pushed to the back and here is the front side. So these little V's are gonna get poked back in because they're gonna get stitched down. All right, there's our little cute little buttonhole. And just get those all pushed back in there, ready to get stitched down. So now we're gonna pull this back and get our little corner, our little V corner ready to go. And we kind of even have the line to stitch it on already in existence. All right, so here we go. Remember how I told you, fold it right here and you're gonna start right next to that fold and sew as close as you can. Sometimes I even err on the side of going in a little bit right here and then come off and down just a little bit and we're sewing that little uh, point, that little clipped point into place. So we're going to enter, put our needle down this way. We don't wanna sew on that fold. We don't want that fold sewn into place. We just want the, the point. That's where it's really important. And I know some of you had a problem with getting the point, getting the fold sewn in a little bit. Okay, so that's basically how we want it stitched into place and let's check it on the public side so we see it's it's in there there's our little bound buttonhole all right so we take that and place we're going to flip it over and you can trim it i go in and trim these i don't want a whole lot of this stuff in here. So I, I trim these down a little bit. That was one thing I didn't really get to show you much in class. Kind of round off these corners a little bit to get that fullness and all the bulk out. Trim threads where you need it. And then this is where we will place and all and these will have interfacings in them. You know, um, but this is where we are going to place the backing, this, is, this would be our facing, okay, on the back of it. And now we're gonna press it, and this is where the pins on each of the corners go in, all right? This is where you put your pin in. All right, the pins with this um, standing up on the little corners and then we're gonna poke them further through to the back. All right, poke them further through and baste it into place. 
baste the back and the front into place. Probably should have basted it first. I think the directions say to baste it first. But we'll go in and, and baste it. This is going to have front and back basted into place. I'm just going to cut that little strip off right there. And baste it all around and we'll, we'll readjust those pins. But we're just attaching the back to the front and getting it ready to do our little double Y clip, okay? And preparing it to be sewn the back onto the public side like I just showed you with the other one. Okay, so here's our bound buttonhole. Baste it into place and pins are going to poke deeper in so that they poke out on the back side. Get them in straight. Don't put them in slanted. All right, pins and then we'll find the center here the center right here and do just like I showed you on that other one that we just did. This one right here. Okay, how we, this is a real narrow lip, but how we then push those little points in and stitched around them. Okay, so this is the back side of mine and how I stitched my buttonholes in with the interfacing. I mean with the facing that has interfacing. This is a black interfacing. And then you see in here how I trimmed around the buttonhole edges so that they were not just chunky and you know bulky so that they bubbled up everything. But yesterday before I pressed this, they there will be some fullness and uh, kind of a little bumpiness in this area and what needs to be done with that is uh, pressing it basically steam pressing it so that all of that goes shrinks in and the fabric uh, threads all go you know closer to one another they shrink together I'm going to talk you through, I think I did one day before, but we're gonna kind of review some pressing because I really know that it's very important to press properly. All right, and earlier on, I talked to you about pressing your chest area, this chest stay that we put in needs to be um, just softened and uh, uh, what am I trying to say well enough part of the jacket that it doesn't bulge out or speak on its own so that it becomes part of the shape of your jacket and you notice how on my ham I have this shoulder area placed over the ham so that I utilize its shape well enough that I can get in here and really give it a good press. And with my steam iron, and usually I'll do a little spray on it. I'm just gonna do this today with my, pretend I have my spray. It's just my steam today. But to press over this area, just give it a good nice press and keep moving keep your iron moving because if you don't you'll get flattened areas that are overpressed don't overpress all right it's kind of better to underpress than to overpress and notice where i went in and changed a little bit of the stitching line here to improve it we're going to go over that this is a piece that you can use in your sleeve also. I inherited this from my mother um, a few years back after she passed and 
this is a really good piece that you can just place in here and get a nice press like we say don't over press this area but where you press is lightly into the sleeve itself into the sleeve head and down in this lower area we aren't to press under the arm there's no need for that don't do that but in this area you can do a little bit of a press just to make it look finished make it look like it had a little bit of attention and this is a great press cloth this is a torn and old hanky men's hanky and it's just a lightweight cotton linen and it's they're wonderful to use but you notice how I keep moving keep it going and just get a little bit of that you can always push it back up in but to get just a little bit out of that um, full unpressed look sometimes it needs just a little touch like I'm doing here all right so that's that um, the sleeve uh, hem had this in it to be pressed to press all of that um, my collar a lot of times I just use the ham and because this is going to be like our final press on the collar so this is how I'm going to make sure that my under portion this lapel uh, that is attached to the body the shoulder and the upper chest area I'm going to make sure that I steam press this seam as flat as I can get it but not over pressed okay so we're going over this a few times and I'm just going to move my cloth down and just keep pressing downward a little bit more into here and you see how when I'm doing this look how this is just trying to roll it wants to roll because this under collar is um, smaller and it's just prepared to roll so once we get that in we're going to use this once again and press the upper collar into place and get the roll back into place with it so we'll press this direction to get the roll really nice and involved and get that get that going now my collar um, lapel and collar also I feel can benefit from flipping it over and pressing it this direction and part of this I know is because I've made this pattern before and this particular collar benefits from a pressing on the interior here and sometimes the rolled collar that is just part of the jacket with the dart underneath the collar sometimes it'll accept this also but you don't want to get a real definite flat pinched place right here okay so that that really um, kind of helped my collar I still want it to have a nice roll to it but it helps it lie in place all right and then rolls into this area where it switches position and the upper collar becomes the facing now to see how I pressed my um, the back side of these of the buttonholes the facing of the buttonholes and you guys remember I told you how I had to piece together my facing because I ran out of fabric and so that's what these seams are right here and I had to make sure that I had plenty of length so I had to kind of adjust the size of those seams to get them exactly right so this we're going to press and make sure that the public side is a little bit longer than the underside than the facing side 
So I'm having to check right in there to make sure mine is good enough right there. Okay, and so we're pressing backwards into that because we want to encourage the facing to go underneath the public side. All right, and so pressing flat the back side of our buttonholes, trying not to overpress it, being really careful to not overpress, and just checking periodically. And like I said, I have all mine hand basted into place, so it's going to be really hard for mine to move out of position, to move out of the position that I want it to be in. All right, and then to go down here on the hem, and you know that it, this has already gotten its catch stitch in, so we can take the pins out, and this makes sure that the hem, um, if you're just rolling yours up, you won't have to worry about making sure, but mine's a facing, so I wanna make sure that the facing is behind the public side, and just press all the way around and, and like I'm showing you a ham will help you have a curved surface that you can work against and get the right pressure and pressing amount that you need. Alright, keep working.